The DeVoe School was the legacy of Judge Samuel DeVoe of Niagara Falls, who in 1853 endowed the vision of a preeminent institution of learning to train young men in academics, trade, and professions, and to give them an education that did not neglect religious training. Samuel DeVoe was born in 1789 in New York City and emigrated to Niagara County in 1807. He became the clerk of commissaries of Fort Niagara and by 1812 had purchased considerable acreage of land southeast of the fort. He also operated a store near the river that dispensed military supplies to the troops on the Great Lakes and the Niagara frontier. In 1819, DeVoe was appointed school commissioner and in 1821, Justice of the Peace, conferring on him the title of Judge DeVoe. In business, DeVoe was a heavy contributor to the Lockport and Niagara Railroad, also known as the Strap Railroad, and helped with construction of the suspension bridge in 1847. His business dealings resulted in vast purchases of land along the Niagara River. So much so, that an entire region of the city still bears his name. Judge DeVoe died suddenly on August 3, 1852, and being deeply religious and a sincere believer in the benefits of education, he left a portion of his estate to the benefit of Niagara Falls and the Episcopal Diocese to establish DeVoe College. The college was located at the city limits and near the Whirlpool. The school's original mission was to provide a complete education and orphanage and home for lost boys. The first building on the site was dedicated on May 20th, 1857. For nearly 80 years, coursework included mandatory military training for cadets all dressed in military uniforms. The last day of military influence on campus came on Founders Day in 1850 when uniforms changed to coats and ties thereafter. The 51-acre site grew to encompass a campus of nearly a dozen buildings and residences. Buildings in the property at one time included Rensselaer Hall, Monroe Hall, Sholcoft Hall, Edgewood, the Walker Residence, the Buscaglia Castellari Art Gallery, a carriage house, and three residential homes. DeVoe College fell on hard times as the demand for prep school education continued to decline in the 20th century. The Episcopal Diocese ceased operations at the school in 1971 and looked for someone else to accept the burden of taking care of the historic structures. Subsequent property owners or leasees included Niagara County, Niagara Falls, Niagara University, OCs, Niagara County Community College, and currently the New York State's Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation, who christened the property DeVoe Woods State Park. The property that the park sits on is where the Senecas gathered to launch their September 14, 1763 assault, which became known as the Devil's Hole Massacre.
Now this is another example of doing a paranormal investigation in the daytime, especially here in the great outdoors and especially in a state park like Deval Woods here. Now, a lot like cemeteries, parks like this close at dusk. So it's kind of difficult to do an investigation and take the nighttime pictures I would like to take in the dark without local law enforcement coming in and pretty much escorting you out of the park. With so many people that do wrong things in parks like that, it's kind of comforting to know that law enforcement is doing its job. Now I'm a firm believer that if something's haunted, it doesn't matter if it's nighttime or daytime, if the spirits are there, they're out. So far I've had a lot of good luck with doing paranormal investigations in cemeteries and places like this in the daytime. If they want to communicate with you, they will. Now, instead of using a standard K2 meter, I use a ghost meter or an EMF detector when I'm doing an outdoor investigation in the daytime. Not only does it give you the lights and the sound, just like this here, what that does, it gives you an audio alert if there's going to be a spirit that wants to communicate with you versus a K2 light all by itself that you might not be able to see or detect because of the sun. A regular K2 meter will work pretty good if it's cloudy, but a day like this, which is a great day to be out for a ghost hunt like this, sometimes you can't see it. So you'll hear an audible beep if I bump into any kind of EMF anomaly. Now the regular EMF detector has the numbers, which I also can use and watch the numbers kind of go up and down. I'm also using a regular camera to take multiple pictures of the area. Hopefully I can catch a spirit anomaly there as well. Plus, I'm using a voice recorder, which doesn't of course rely on any kind of light to work. If something wants to talk or I can pick up a voice, of course I can pick it up with a voice recorder. I'm going to walk around the entire perimeter of the park and check the outbuildings. Now the outbuildings and the castle building behind me can't have access to them, they're all boarded up. But maybe we can catch some sounds coming from inside of them, or we can catch uh, some wandering spirits roaming the grounds. I suppose if I was a spirit, I have no problem roaming these grounds to a wonderful park. VVP stands for Video Voice Phenomenon, and that's exactly what we caught in the clip that I'm about to show you. Now, this spirit seems to have taken a fancy to me because I believe it says, oh, look at him. Give it a listen. All in all, it was a great day to do the paranormal investigation at DeVoe Woods in Niagara Falls. It's a great place to go, to do hiking, have a picnic, and of course when you're done to see all the wonders that Niagara Falls has to offer. And if you're lucky, as we have proved, to have possibly a paranormal encounter of your very own.